Ash and go with the smooth moves. <laughs> Happy New Year's everyone! Yo, what's up everyone? Trayman1 here. Welcome back to another Pokemon Journeys anime breakdown video. Today, guys, we gotta break down the new opening, opening three. So much interesting stuff. And speaking of openings, if y'all are wondering what that intro was, it's from Ben's newest video. Thank you so much for the shout out, Ben and Zach. Their newest reaction, go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But yeah, guys, we got a lot to cover today. So let's go ahead and get right into the breakdown. Yo, I love this new opening so much. For starters, the song used once again is one, two, three, after the ring, but sung by two new artists. And I gotta say, you know, the visuals were so amazing. It was a lot more calm and chill compared to the last version, which was a lot more hype and rock action based. We get to see a lot more Galar in this opening as well. Leon actually dropping the Leon Mobile Charizard card. Like, it was amazing to see all this interesting content. And if you all know Leon from the game, then you know that he has a horrible sense of direction. We see him use, trying to use a map and just looking confused the whole time. So I feel like they're supposed to be going somewhere. Maybe we're going to have a, a small mini arc where Leon's like, oh, yeah, I'll take you to, you know, Winden. And they just keep going all over Galar. This is a nice way for them to show off more areas in Galar and more Dynamax Pokemon. Maybe they battle some Dynamax Pokemon along the way. That seems pretty interesting. Dynamax, Gigantamax Meowth is actually showing again, too, which that's a good thing because... I didn't really like his first appearance in the Darkest Day arc, so I'm hoping that he has a better, bigger role and actually fights Ash in his Pikachu. We also get to see Grookey again, and it's interesting because Grookey's playing with Ash and Go. It seems like both of them are trying to get it. I like how they're keeping it hidden of who's going to get it. More than likely, it's going to be Go, but I like that there's a possibility that Ash could get this Pokemon as well. This opening ends up showing off Ash's whole team, Dragonite, Gengar, and Farfetch, which I love so much. And, you know, obviously Lucario, of course. It's also hinting that Chloe may possibly be catching this Galarian Ponyta, which I will be totally down for. And also, we get to see the big Go and Suicune moment, which I'm guessing kind of like Zapdos. Go's going to try and catch it, but he's going to fail. So that's pretty cool how they're handling the legendaries. My favorite scene is when they show off all the important characters. You know, obviously they start off with Oak, Professor Cerise, the two assistants, calm and cool, but then they start showing characters like Karina. Yes, Karina's coming back. I'm so excited. I hope that, you know, she gets done right because her first appearances have been dirty. Like, they made her so much weaker. I'm hoping she comes back stronger. Who knows? She may just be Ash. We get the great Sonya herself. Wow. <laughs> be a Ash's rival. Wingstroke, which, you know, is coming soon to train Farfetch. And then they dropped the two bangers on us. My gosh. The return of Iris and Gary Oak. My gosh. Did this catch me off guard? Completely by surprise, and I'm so so hyped for this. Let's start with Iris. I'm so glad Iris is returning. You know, she was robbed of her return in X and Y because they kind of changed things up a bit. And I always likes Iris a lot more than Silent. Silent I wasn't a too big fan of, but Iris's character was pretty cool. You know, I do hope she doesn't call Ash a kid no more because let's be honest, Ash in black and white he did act childish, so he kind of deserved it. But now he's gotten better. One thing I really do love is that you know we don't see. Axew anywhere. So it's a possibility that Axew could have evolved into a Haxorus or a Fracture. Man, I hope it's a Haxorus though, because back in black and white, Axew dreamed of evolving into Haxorus. We didn't get to see that, but Journey's Twitter posted, expect to see her growth. So I'm assuming that she's going to become a much better trainer now. Who knows? She may be Universe Champion finally. A champion battle between Ash and Iris would be amazing. For starters, you know, we got her Dragonite. I can't wait to see the two Dragonites fight. They have to fight. If y'all don't know, Iris' Dragonite was actually my profile picture, my first profile picture on YouTube and Twitter for the longest. That Dragon Rush was so amazing. She's been training with Claire, so she has to have gotten stronger. I would love to see Excadrill, Imonga, see if her Gibble evolved, and see if she caught any new Pokemon. It would be cool if she catches a Galar Dragon type. Man, I'm super excited for the return of Iris. I can't wait to see her battle with Ash in this series. Then we got your boy, Gary Oak. Oh my goodness, I did not expect to see this return. I actually made a theory video back in Sun and Moon, considering how Brock and Misty returned that series, and it was kind of wrapping Ash's journey around. I was actually predicting that he was gonna return that series, but I was wrong just two years off because he's here in Journeys. At that, they mentioned that he is gonna be Ash's rival. That's right, folks. Gary's coming out of retirement and is entering the Pokemon World Championships. Yo, that's gonna be so amazing seeing Ash and Gary go at it again. As we know, the last time these two battled, Ash actually lost. So it's gonna be interesting to see here. I wonder if Gary's gonna have Mega Blastoise because, you know, we did see Mega Blastoise in the Mega Evolution special, but I feel like a main 
character or main rival having this mega Pokemon would be amazing. Brock had a mega, Misty had a mega. Go ahead and give Gary that mega Blastoise, yo. It's gonna be amazing seeing these two fight again, and I can't wait to see what Gary has in store for us. Many fans also believe that Gary could have a role with Chloe and her Eevee's development as well, considering there's a scene in the opening where we're seeing Chloe with her Eevee and all the Eevee illusions around. So it does seem like they want to try and evolve Eevee. Obviously, Gary has Umbreon, so that's going to be a cool interaction between those two characters. I really do hope Gary has an impact on Chloe and Go, kind of like how Kiawe affected Go, you know, just to see old companions and rivals affect the new companions. We finally get to see a scene of Ash versus Go as well. As you know, Lucario vs. Cinderace, Ash vs. Go was teased in merchandise way back. So I'm just cool that we're finally going to see this. Also, another plug out. I made a video on this as well, guys, where it was a 6v6, but it seems like it's going to be a 1v1. Now, this episode is going to be pretty interesting as well, considering the fact that I think Ash and Go are going to have many battles throughout the series. As we know, Lucario and Cinderace are the ace. I can see maybe right now Ash kind of being on top, but it'll be interesting is if they battle throughout the series, Go kind of becomes on par with Ash. Or maybe goes on top right now and Ash overcomes him. Like, it'll be a complete shocker to see that. But we just have to wait and see what they decide to do. It does seem like we will finally be returning to the Pokemon World Championships as well as we get a scene of Ash versus Leon. A rematch, which is going to be pretty cool. Now, I don't think this is the final fight. I think the final fight will happen more than likely in year three. Ash is only in the super class now. And we haven't had a World Championship battle in over 10 episodes. My gosh. But it's coming back next week. Let's go with our boy Come on. So... I'm wondering how this rematch is going to go, why will they be having this rematch, and will we finally get to see Pikachu Dynamax again, because Ash isn't ready to fight Leon yet, he's only Dynamax Pikachu that one time back in episode 12 and 13, like he hasn't done any Dynamax training, so I'm pretty sure if they rematch here, he's going to lose if he uses Dynamax. A lot of people like to say that, you know, Ash looks like he's using the Z move in this scene, but I don't think that's the case. But I do feel like Ash will use his Z move again in the series real soon. But to finish this opening off, we do get to see a lot more mythicals in this opening, which means we're going to have a more focus on this Pokemon, along with the final shots showing many old and new scenes and trainers as well that we will be seeing in Pokemon Journeys, like Karina, the Alola characters, Bia, so much content. So I'm looking forward to what this year of Journeys has in store. It looks like it's going to be a really great year for Pokemon Journeys. It looks like they're taking a step in the right direction, focusing on all the characters and their development. And I really can't wait to see what they have in store for us with Ash, Go, Chloe, and Leon all riding in the car. I love that Chloe is finally a traveling companion and has a more focus in the opening and series now. That's going to be really cool. But yeah, everyone, in the comment section down below, let me know what you're all most excited for about this new opening. I know for me, it's definitely Iris and Gary returning, along with Ash fighting Go. That's going to be so amazing. And Chloe's development. I really can't wait to see. And yeah, guys, I love this new opening a lot. And I can't wait for, you know, year two of Pokemon Journeys. It looks like it has a lot of promise and potential. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And happy 2021 to you all. Trayman 1. Peace out.